So who has the legal right to take care of a child in the event of a divorce, separation, or even death of a parent? It's not just up to who the child prefers most, as there are many other factors used to, deserve, used to determine the guardianship of a child. We've invited Stephen Jackson, attorney at Samudi and Johnson Law Firm, to share with us. Good morning. Welcome to Smile Jamaica. Stephen, how are you? Hi, Neville. Good morning. And Empress, morning to you. Good morning, Mr. Jackson. It's good to see you. We're going to get into this topic because many people are facing this situation and need more information to make life better for their children. So where do we begin? Right, so. Well, let me start and ask you, um, Stephen, on, God forbid um, my child loses her mother. Isn't that natural that I'm the father that I get her? Isn't that just natural? Yes, it, it can be a situation like that. Uh, the Children, Guardianship and Custody Act makes provision for the parent to take over as guardian whenever it is that one of the parents uh, die in maybe tragic circumstances or any circumstances at all. So the, 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 the law makes provision for the surviving parent to take up care and control of that child. So provision is always made in law to ensure that if one parent passes, then the other takes up the mantle. Or the court can also make provision or make orders as to the appointment of guardian of a guardian who is not uh, the mother or the father. Would cause that. So if, again, God forbid, um, uh, the mom dies, I'm the father, what would cause the court to say, well, no, you can't have the child? The court always considers what we say in law is the best interest of the child. And it touches on concern also what we call the welfare principle. So the court looks at certain considerations. Let's say the stability of the home, the interaction between mother and father, that would include the stability of the home in terms of financial, psychological, educational. So the court considers a whole array of factors in determining whether or not a parent should have a child. So the consideration mainly, the paramount consideration for the court is what is in the best interest of the child. And uh, this is exposed in the Children Guardianship and Custody Act. And in international law, it's also in the Convention of the Rights of the Child. Thank you for that, Stephen. I have to ask you a very sensitive case, but a very high profile case. The case of Jody Ann Ferron, her death sparked national outrage. However, we know that there is a custody battle between the father of her daughter, or her child, and Jody Ann Ferron's parents. Um, a case like this, you already said that the court would naturally, or the other parent would assume custody, naturally. What happens in a battle like this? How does the court review this kind of case? If the father of wants case. her child, yes. Okay, as I indicated earlier, the court considers what is in the best interest of the child. And if an application is put before the court, then the, court, the court's uh, purpose and mandate is to consider the evidence on its totality. To consider okay, the let, let, I want to stop you there, Stephen. I want to stop you there because I, yes. I, I want to I I start with this. By law, the child yes. would be the father's right to have custody and somebody would have to apply to take custody from the father. I want to look at the- From custody. the father, yes. Right, okay, that go ahead. That person would have to do that. Okay, and go that ahead. that application would be heard by the court uh -huh. and then the court would consider, based on all the evidence put before it, what would be in the best interest of the child. And also, the parental rights of the surviving spouse cannot be trumped. And to, to trump that um, right or those rights, the court would have to consider whether or not there are extraneous circumstances so as to go above and beyond what, that, what the rights of that parent, parent is. What happens mm. if I am in a position, again, going back to losing the mother, and I'm in a position to look after my child, I'm in a good home, um, financially stable, but I don't want the child. What does the court say about that? Can the court force me to take the child? The court would not necessarily force you to take the child, but the court will consider whether or not there is another person, let's say a family member. There's a culture in Jamaica right now where, let's say relatives overseas 
think that based on their financial or social circumstances, it would be in the child's best interest for that relative to take the child, then the court can consider having done a thorough review of the capacity of that person to take care and control of that child, then the court can move and has the jurisdiction to make such an order. But um, legally, can the court do anything to, to the father? And say, well, is your child and you're in a position to look after the child, can the court, I, I've used the word force before, but can I be in trouble because of that? Yes, you can, because legally, if you are the biological parent, then it, it goes to say that you must have care and control of the child. However, there are circumstances which may force this situation to go in a different direction. And then the court can step in to protect the, the interests of the child to ensure that whatever decision is made in terms of care and control, it is in the best interest of the child. And the child's welfare is protected. So the court has what we call a parent's patria jurisdiction, which pretty much covers the rights of the child and to ensure that whatever orders are made considers the best interest of the child. Thank you, Stephen. I want to look at a case scenario. Uh, a divorce happens. Yes. And the children are back and forth between mother and father. How long yes. does it normally take for a custody battle to be resolved? It depends. <laughs> it depends. Again, because if, if it's a lit litigious matter, meaning it goes before the court and lawyers get involved, which in most cases lawyers do get involved, then the situation can get a little, become a little bit sticky. And then depending on the nature of the relationship between the father and the mother, that will also guide how well or how fast the court can dispose of the matter. Again, the, the court has the power to enter a consent order between the mother and the father to ensure that custody arrangements are smooth. And in those circumstances, it, 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 it can happen in a quick time, maybe a month or two. If not, it can go on for a year or even more because it, those situations can become very contentious because remember again, we're dealing with children and anything dealing with children can result in some level of stress, especially for the parents and for the attorneys as well, because right. we have to ensure that we put our client's best interest before the court and to protect that interest as well. Hmm. I want to go for another sensitive um, conversation here. Child support, yes. ab absentee parents, I don't yes. want to put a gender to it, but a working parent who is not looking after their child, DNA say a feel yes. pick me, and yes. you're not providing financial support, whatever it's called, child support, financial support for the child. What does yes. the law say about that, Mr. Jackson? The law says that, let's say we have a parental situation. Let's say mother and father living together, mm -hmm. or not living together, it could be a visiting union. The mother is aggrieved because she believes that the father is not taking up his mantle of being the financial support for the child. In those circumstances, the mother can apply to the court and take out a summons and issue it on that person who would be the respondent or defendant, whichever way you look at it. And that person would be obliged to appear before the court and answer to the plate that was lodged by the mother or the, or the father, whichever way, it can go both ways. Mm -hmm. So either the mother or the father can apply if it is that the other spouse or parent is not taking care of their responsibilities towards the child. Yep. And right. the court certainly will hear the evidence from both parties and will make a determination. Again, I keep saying this, what is in the best interest of the child. Yep. Final question for me, Stephen. Um, at what age, if any age at all, does the child have anything to do with this? Can the child go to court? I mean, obviously, in the case of um, Jodi Ann's child, she's obviously too young um, to say anything. Yes. But what age would the court say, what you want, Neville? Um, and would the court go by what Neville want? Um, the Act, the Act, the Children, Guardianship and Custody Act goes on to describe the child as a uh, person under the age of 18. However, in the circumstances that the, person, the child is under 18, then an independent representative can apply to the court and bring 
either the mother or the father or both of them before the court to protect the interests of the child. So until the child is 18, the child has absolutely no say about whether they want to live with me or Empress or anybody? Oh, no, that's not, that's not the case at all. The court, in applying the welfare principle, considers the wishes of the child as one of the main factors okay. in determining okay. what would be in the best interest of the child. Okay. All right, Stephen, we have to wrap, but a very important question for the better of our country and our children. If a yes. child is in a home and is being abused physically, sexually, somebody's touching them in a wrong way yes. for our children watching, listen carefully. If you are uncomfortable, if you are beaten at home or you are hurt and abused, Stephen, what yes. does the law say? What can happen for this child in the best interest of the child if they do what? Okay. The child can speak to an adult and then you have a few recourses. You can take the matter to the police. So the matter ought to be reported to the police, the nearest police station. Thereafter, the body mandated to deal with those type of situations, that being Sissoka, would step in and seek to protect the child going forward. All right. Parents, protect your children. And until the day when there's no more abuse in this country, we must continue to speak about it so we can end it and find solutions. And for the best interest of the children, parents, let's get it together. Adults, let's do what is right for our children. Stephen Jackson, attorney at law. Thank you so much. Samuda and Johnson Law Firm. Have a thank great you. day. All right, Stephen. Take care. Be safe. On the other side of the break, we head to the United States for a post-election roundup. Soon come.